Hi, I'm Andy. Hi, it's Dave. Hi, it's Kirk. Okay, so today we are checking out Faith No More and we, it's a song called Caffeine. Now, this is your request, Kirk. Uh, why are we checking out Caffeine by Faith No More? Yep, so uh, we're doing a documentary series with a nominal title of How to Meet Your Musical Idols in Six Months or Less. We might need to shorten that down. And Mike Patton is the greatest singer in rock and metal for me in any genre. Um, he's got the, the most dynamic range, multiple personalities. <laughs> and you could give him any genre of music and he will just dominate it and take over and just <laughs> change the vibe. Um, so this is a person that I've, I've been listening to since 1999, so 1998. Angel Dust is my all-time favourite album in any genre of music. Um, and this performance, 1992, I'll give you some context after. Just watch this and tell me what you think. This is a live MTV performance that would have aired midday. That's okay. all I'm going to say. Uh, Andy, have you heard this song before? I haven't either. I've, I know Faith No More, but not into the level of detail that Kirk does either. I could tell you about maybe three or four tracks. And I know that back in the 90s, Epic, whenever Epic came on, that would be, I'd be on the slam pit dance floor, my mates just kicking things over. But that would be about all I can tell you about that. Um, so my, my Faith No More knowledge is, you've just explained, reminded me of the title, but where Mike Patton's got big boxing gloves on and it's raining. <laughs> yeah, epic. Yeah. yeah, we all know Epic. There we I am go. a metal fan, by the way, in case anybody's wondering, but I, apart from that video, I, I don't know Faith No More at all. Okay, so this, so this will be, be interesting. interesting. Yeah, let's go check out Faith No More and Caffeine think? then. <laughs> That's the song, guys. What do you think? Well done.
Hello, MTV. Okay. <laughs> um, Over to you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, who wants to go first, Andy? <laughs> the uh, the grind coin trust probably the best bit, wasn't it? Definitely near palm death influencer. Uh, uh, they look like they're enjoying themselves. Um, I quite like the sort of the picking in the main riff. Is this indicative of what they, they play, Kirk? You know, is, it, is this a typical Faith More style? No. I mean, there's, there's, there's lots of different things <laughs> thrown into the pot there. They've got a band of multiple personalities and there. Yeah, I, yeah I, I mean, think I've seen that before. I've seen other stuff from them. And so I would say that's not indicative of a standard of Faith No More track overall. There's a lot of different elements though, but it's yeah. Carry I, on, I, Andy. I, Sorry, I, I can't offer too many positive. It's it's not my stuff. I mean, they're, they're making some interesting noises in the middle with the, the vocals and the guitar. As I say, there's the sort of no palm death intro and outro, but okay, <laughs> okay. I, I'll, I'll, I'll I can't be any more positive than that. It's, okay. it, it's it's not for me. I mean, we're all. Which means I'm not to categorize it. Though. That's the thing. Huh? Would you even know how to categorize it? That I, I never have done. I mean, that is, is very different from from the song Epic, which is almost, you yeah. know, sort of pop in, in parts, isn't it? You know, whether that's sort of a, you know, a, a trying to get an entry into the mainstream, but didn't like that, didn't like this track either. But uh, uh, yeah, you can't categorize. I would, if anyone was to say, you know, that band Faith Moore, what would you call Cracker up, categorize him as avant garde rock? Then you say multiple personalities, multiple music styles, uncategorizable. Just my thing. I, I can't, I can't, I can't deride it or say anything more positive than that. You know, okay. if that's your thing, great. It's, it's not mine. I'm sorry. Okay. I, from my point of view, listening to that one, it kind of gave me this. I got, uh, I got real hints of early punk, sort of like it's almost like prog rock mixed with uh, late seventies, early eighties punk merged together because they were trying to do like this there's a lot of elements of artistic performance it was almost like they were doing an art installation and they were going to do this thing where they're trying to make you trying to get a point across like we're going to talk about slaughterhouses and this is what this song's about we're going to act like squealing pigs at the beginning and it's it's almost like they're trying to put a message rather than a song um i love the intensity i love the bass tone uh, i would have liked to have hit the guitar it was obviously a real kind of dialed back distortion tones which meant it blended with the bass quite a lot so i really at one point at the beginning of the song i'm like is there actually guitar playing all i heard was fat bass line um i didn't mind it too much but i would have liked to heard that guitar come through a bit more for me from a listening point of view um i did like there were certain elements of it i really liked but i also know a lot more faith than more tracks so like for instance for me from like from out of nowhere it's an amazing rock metal track and if you picked that one today, I think Andy's impression might be slightly different because it's more of a straightforward, full in your face rock song. Um, so I know from that point of view, so I, I can kind of get it. I th they did a whole album that was like this. There was no way on earth I would listen to it. But <laughs> one song on an album like this, you could kind of go, OK, what is it they're trying to get across with it? Uh, what's the point of the song? What is it they're trying to say? I mean, because it's called caffeine. Is it because it's the song's meant to wake you up in the morning? Is that what the song's about? I don't know, but I love the intensity of, of the performance. Um, I loved I loved actually how the, the fans were just like one of them at the end looked like he was in a trance at the end. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, my that. God, I, you've just overwhelmed <laughs> me. I'm like, what young, the hell? <laughs> I don't know what that was about. Um, the other thing I kind of noticed, which was less about the song and actually just about sort of how things were set up and performance, because we talk about like music videos and how things are all connected, which is great because it's a live one. But did you notice on the drums how flat his toms were and how high they were? How the hell does he get his drumstick on the top of them to play the toms? It's, I don't know how he was doing that. And um, it's one of the other ones. You, nowadays, uh, you didn't think much about it. It was very much the hardcore scene where uh, people cut the microphone. 
they get their hand right around the microphone. So you've only got this little bit of the hole where you can actually sing into, and they all talk about how bad that technique is. And you could actually hear that when, when Mike was actually doing some of the vocal stuff. He had the mic right up and he had closed all the side of it. He's like, <laughs> it all muffled tone. So it's that bad mic technique that you get. But it was such a thing of that sort of stage where nowadays vocalists are doing a lot less of that because it's now talked about, about how utilizing the SM58 and all around the microphone is, is an important part. But um, yeah, interesting track. Could you give us more background on the track, Kirk, or yeah, sure. context? So I'll give you a context this album, Andy. You'll be interested. So I'm going to pick up on some of the things you said there. Oh, really good. Um, good feedback as well. So first of all, that album that Epic's from, you said when they wrote, uh, sorry, The Real Thing it's called, and Epic was this major MTV hit, which fifth and more, we're never really a band that envisaged it'd be popular or be in the charts. And that album shifted 4 million. So that was 1989. Three years later, we get Angel Dust. And famously, it's called the most uncommercial follow-up to a hit album ever in mm. Spin Magazine, I think it was, or Rolling Stone. And the, when I say it's an album of multiple personalities, this is the album that has the Lionel Richie cover of Easy, which was a smash hit success. This album got to number two in the UK album charts. It's got to be the most extreme album to ever mm. get that high. This is the one Fifth and More album where there's a clear extreme metal influence, death metal. Um, there's even like a gothic black metal song, even though this is only 1992, called Malpractice on Angel Dust. But to me, the vocals, I remember seeing an interview with Devin Townsend. He said, this is how we all learned how to do this style through Mike Patton, through this album. Clearly, Chino Moreno of Deftones, Jonathan Davis of Korn, they take inspiration from this. Yeah, you're right. Now, you'd probably call this avant-garde metal. At the time, it was just rock, metal, heavy metal. I don't know what, what people were calling it. That's why I, I, I remember buying this album. I just couldn't get I didn't understand it when I was 16. And then it was actually Terrorizer magazine. They did their albums in the 90s, and they had this in, and they explained it. I was like, oh, okay, I'll listen to it with this in mind. And then straight away, I understood it. Um, so yeah, Mike, Mike Patton there. Did you see the, how, just, just look at the primal aggression in there, but there was some real impressive melodies in there as well, that he was doing some harmonies. And then as I said to you in a previous video, when we were looking at Decline the Fall, that technique that New Metal appropriated where the singer's almost having a conversation with himself bit of salacious breathing down the microphone it all comes from this song and it was ripped off so many times um in the 1990s uh so yeah you again napalm death so the bass player ended up in that band brujeria or brujeria with um what's he called from fear factory um so you'll see you'll see bill Gould wearing a napalm death t-shirt around this time when you know when they're doing interviews with smash hits magazine um, Jim Martin is, is basically an unreconstructed Neanderthal metalhead. You can see that. Look at his image. Best friends with Cliff Burton, by the way, as well. Um, and on the Epic video, he's wearing a tribute to Cliff Burton t-shirt. But one final thing I'll say about this band, which always stood out for me. Five different people, five different tastes in music. Yeah. My God, do they make it work? But they kind of went out of the way to not be commercially successful, if that makes sense. I don't understand why anyone would do that. Um, but they deliberately did not play the game on this album, even though they yeah. went on that tour with Metallica and Guns N' Roses. They were fucking well ahead of the time with this album. And even today, I think the genius of this record, I don't think it is underappreciated now. It is so influential and um, the best album of all time for me. I, I don't think anything will ever better it. Fair enough. I mean, it's interesting for me just to wrap up on this one is that when we talk about like the like Epic and you said about the cover of Easy, but also one of their other biggest songs that people talk about is We Care A Lot. And that wasn't even Mike Patton doing the vocals. That was pre-Mike Patton, wasn't it? Chuck Mosley, yeah. Chuck and again, Mosley. Yeah. Right. That, Great that, vocalist. That song, that song basically invented alternative metal, and that mm. was 1987. So even if Great they were up after then, they would still have been cited as the first band, you know, that would have had an inspiration on grunge. That's it. The, the 90s were kind to Fifth No More, even though they split up in 98. They didn't suffer because of grunge, you know, they weren't a hair metal band. They, they'd already, I think Chris Novoselic of Nirvana said, Faith the most real thing opened it up for us, mm. opened the way. So, yeah, I mean, absolutely Interesting. legendary band. Good track. Okay, so that was Faith No More and Caffeine. 
Kirk's choice of a song for us to do. Uh, if you like the video, please do subscribe, click the bell icon, like and share, and we'll see you on another video sometime soon. Take care.